Hello, my name is Nikhil Nair. I'm part of the 21-23 batch at XLRI. And the subject of this video is how do you manage, how do you handle the last 10 days of that preparation, right? Now, we have to put the timeline in perspective for me to be able to answer the question well, because CAT is typically in last week of November or the first week of December, right? And followed by that, we have you tend to get around 30 days before that happens in the first on the first Sunday uh, of January. Right. So that's about 30 days and you have 20 days before CAT. So rather than trying to answer what you should do uh, in the last 50 days of that, I think I'll have to rephrase and reframe the question a little bit to uh, answer what do you do in the last 20 days of before CAT and then what do you do in the one month before CAT and that. Uh, between cat and that, sorry. All right. Uh, so coming to the first one, what you should do in the last 20 days is just focus on the field book. You know, focus on closing the loops. Consciously don't open new loops. Uh, whatever you think that you have probably not devoted enough time to, it's probably you're probably better off not trying to understand or figure out something afresh rather than uh, or the time your time would be better spent by doubling down on the macros on the big picture on the overalls right rather than being too hung up about your weakness in one topic of uh, qa it's better if you focus more on what's your overall strategy for the that particular section uh, for that the entire three hour paper whether it is cat or that and trying to uh, experiment with different approaches to to uh, taking the paper and and to appearing for the exam, than getting too microscopic about one particular aspect of your preparation. Why this is important is because at the end of the day, uh, while you do need to you need to be particular uh, particular about uh, topic by topic at a micro level, but you need to or what will actually matter more while you are taking the exam is how comfortable you are how how well are you moving through the paper All right it, it's about it's a lot like constructing an innings you know a test innings right where where that one particular ball or one particular delivery which let's say it, it and miss for you does not really matter but it's about how you handle those five hours when you're at the crease which will eventually decide the score that you end up making right so focus on the feel good focus on the overall the macro the big picture again right don't be too hung up hung up about uh, individual topics that you're good at not good at uh, no it won't matter as much as you you getting your overall, uh, overall strategy right that's number one that that's in the last 20 days of cat and i think the one week before the exam uh, it makes a lot of sense to not take any mocks, to just reflect on some of the past mocks that you've taken, to be clear about your strategy as to what you're going to do, not going to do, uh, what's your plan A, what's your plan B, whether you should have a plan B at all. And all of that is fairly subjective, so I wouldn't really preach too much about it because I'm a big believer that no matter uh, what works for one person, it could absolutely backfire, backfire for the second person, right? It's, End of the day, it's a game of application, and what will work well, what will work well for you, definitely, definitely, uh, is not the gospel truth for a second person, right? I, I have a lot to say, but you know, it's all I'm trying to condense it in uh, the best uh, way possible. Uh, coming to the one month between cat and that, uh, and this is where I would say I, I have a lot more to say actually is the big mistake that people do is that they just switch off right you typically if you're working you've typically taken leave just before cat and immediately after cat you resume office you go start going back to work you're trying to cope up with whatever you may had missed out on during that time and that ends up becoming a slightly inferior priority as compared to all the all the other things which you are required to do all right so i would say uh, it's easier said than done but do not let the intensity drop. It's okay if you are not able to devote as many hours because you're already prepared for CAT. You put in the hours, you put in the effort, right? But you need to ensure that you're switched, switched on and that you don't lose your sense of rhythm that is there. Uh, the level of comfort that you have with, you know, the whole exam taking experience before that. And how do you do that is you devote 
some time every day rather than a lot of time on a few days here and there or only on weekend ensure that at least three out of the five days or if possible all the five weekdays that you are able to take out an hour somewhere during the day it could be one hour one block of 60 minutes it could be four blocks of 15 minutes whichever way you can you want to take it up you you know better as to what works for you uh be very clear that you there's no way around it you need to put in the bare minimum of 60 minutes on practically every day to to ensure that you don't do scratch with you know the exam format or exam taking as a skill set right i mean the one thing with the education system has taught you is that it's one thing to be knowledgeable but it, it takes a different toolbox to be able to attempt and score well at exam so that that's the one uh, big adv- big big advice and i mean i uh, cannot stress on it enough that you cannot switch off before that uh, coming to the adjustments that you need to specifically make it for the, uh, just one section which is the decision making section uh, sectional which i absolutely love for the simple reason is lrdi never really worked for me right lrdi repeatedly was my kindly feel so to say it never worked for me and never could score i never really got going in that section and the odd occasions which i actually did uh, i ended up not doing well in some of the the uh, one of the other two sections but having said that i i love that uh, section because the mandate there is fairly simple it is much simpler than for dlr dlr could be anybody's game you can be post anything absolutely anything and it is about it's like you know you're trying to break open a lock right without a key so it becomes very important as to where exactly on the lock do you hit in what pose with what pose do you hit in which direction exactly do you hit and do you really want to break the lock completely or do you want to just crack it open i mean there are a lot of things which are going into it decision making uh, for that on the other hand i mean i'm definitely oversimplifying here a little bit but uh, it is not inaccurate to say that it is about how well do you understand the values which are core to xlri right the best source is probably all the past papers of that right you can go back to as long as possible collate all of them together and start solving them one after the other you know maybe one paper at a time maybe 10 questions at a time which are way you want to take it up and once you solve enough right and if you are doing all of this very deliberately very consciously uh you will have to have a notebook or maintain some sort of uh, have some sort of note taking to note down all of those patterns which you are observing right so for example if there are three courses of action one is the ideal course of action but extremely impractical the second one is not very ideal but uh, uh, you know completely pragmatic the third one could be absolutely nothing like no action at all and just to bring in a fourth one the fourth one could be uh, somewhere where you do the right thing but you end, end up doing two or you it is done by a wrong person you know somebody is not supposed to be there or somebody who has no stake at all in that particular context right i will not answer this on video because i would want you to figure this out while you are doing all the mock taking and the question solving but if you put in enough hours questions like these patterns like this you will be able to able to identify yourself that's what and that's how i kind of Uh, crack the code that okay this is what is the right answer and it's the right answer for very right reasons right uh, i mean i i am relying on a little bit a little bit of uh, cliches here but xlri wants to eventually make and produce good leaders for the industry and those good leaders need to have very sound decision making as a skill set right so this decision making section has been brought in or is a part of that for that very reason and you need to first respect that then you need to get in all the values internalize all the values which are core to xlri how and you do that by solving paper after paper question after question make notes on what is core to xlri discover uh, you know what what is dear to xlri and what is not dear what is okay and not okay with xlri and you will get good really really good at that particular sectional uh, coming to quant uh, difficulty wise i think it you know grade higher or a grade uh, one step above cat but it's not something which you cannot tackle if you have already prepared for cat 
All right. And similar thing for verbal minor adjustments here and there. And I don't think you need to devote any time to make that adjustment. You just you can actually adapt while you're taking a mock or while you're solving, you know, you know one of the old that papers. All right. So that's pretty much for it. The first, the last 20 days before CAT, uh, just amplify the feel good, focus on the big picture. The 30 days between CAT and that, do not switch off. Just ensure that you end up learning everything which is core to XLRI because that is at the heart of the uh, decision-making section. That's pretty much that I have to say. Thanks a lot. Thank you.